I appreciate all the men who were here. I appreciate all the fathers who were here. Appreciate everybody this year. But um, and maybe you had a good daddy. Maybe you didn't have a good daddy. I didn't have a good daddy. I had a better uh, 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 step daddy. But nonetheless, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a good, I didn't have a good one at all. But uh, in in other words, it's, this is a good day. This is a good day for men to be recognized, and uh, we are doing a terrible service to our young people here in this country, our young boys particularly. Everything is girls. Let's see, either it's girls or um, it's um, black people or Hispanic people or whatever. But nonetheless, uh, and, I, and everybody, uh, um, you know, everybody has a, has a right to, to be recognized. I understand that, but um, but we're not doing our young people any service at all. Now, what I am doing today, and what I'm the, the last Sunday, I'll do uh, the third Sunday. I, what I'm talking about is uh, how, how to be saved, or how how to know that you're saved, and uh, those kinds of things. So I'm going to talk this morning from Revelation chapter three and verse twenty. So turn in your Bibles there, if you would please, uh, Revelation chapter three and verse twenty. I know uh, that is not uh, Revelation chapter three to verse twenty is not uh, particularly for unsaved people, but we have over, over the years we have used it that way. But nonetheless, uh, Jesus said in Revelation chapter tw three verse twenty, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him." and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with, set, set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So that's our, our text for today. Warner Salzman and I may have talked with you about this one time before, but it, it doesn't make any difference because I, I want to really drive this point home as best I possibly can. Warner Solomon painted a beautiful picture of Christ knocking at the door. Most, some of you have it in your home. Some of you have seen what I'm talking about. Most all of you have seen what I'm talking about. Jesus is standing at, standing at the door and beautiful garden and all that, and he's knocking at a door. But anyhow, uh, a picture of Christ knocking at, the, at a door. People said that he did not paint a completed picture because there was no way to open the door from the outside. He explained that the door must be open from the inside. Then they understood that it was Christ knocking at the heart's door of mankind. A few years ago, I copied this poem. I added a line to it, but anyhow, here's what it says. Every day in various ways, our Savior is wanting to come in. We hear his voice. We know the choice. The question remains is when. When will we say yes to this most honored of guests? that wants only a bless and to heal. The answer remains, and this is the line that I added to it, the answer remains, and for all it's the same, when we surrender our stubborn will. So that is the introduction to our message for today. Who is knocking at our doors? So let's look now. At, I'm gonna answer some questions as we go along this morning, okay? Who is this knocking at our heart's door? Now, I hope everybody here is a Christian. I hope everybody has opened your life to the Lord. I hope you've surrendered your heart and life unto Him. I haven't talked to you specifically about that, but uh, anyhow, I remember the day that I got right with the Lord. It was a wonderful, wonderful day. 
I didn't know much about Christianity, didn't know much about the Bible, didn't know much about anything. All I knew is two things. I knew I was lost and going to hell, at number one. Then I knew if I asked God to forgive me, he would save me. I asked God to forgive me, and he saved my soul. I didn't see any angel wings, any angel feathers falling down. I didn't that thought anything like that. I just knew that God had forgiven my sins from me. Who is this knocking at our heart's door? It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He's our Savior. He's our healer. He's our caregiver. This week, Peggy and I were traveling. Last week, we were traveling. And it was a busy time. We understand uh, about the Interstate 40. We understand about Interstate 2020 we understand because we have traveled those roads lately. But before we, try to, before we leave the house, we always try to say, say Lord, look after us, care for us, because I can't, we can't look after ourselves. You know, somebody else can run over us, some, uh, some truck can run over us, or whatever, you know. But nonetheless, uh, he is our caregiver. He is our healer. He is our Savior. It's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that wants to come into every heart and to every life. I read eight eight different yeah, eight different uh, uh, missionaries in the in, in a book this week and it, it, it was just it was just a blessing to read those particular stories um, what is it hearts hearts of fire hearts on fire something like that but nonetheless uh, it was it was a wonderful time it is the second person it's the second person of the Holy Trinity Trinity he is God now, they didn't like it when he said that. He said, told all those scribes and all those Pharisees and all the people, he said, I am God. They didn't like that. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to uh, uh, put him down and, and so forth. But he is still the second person of the Holy Trinity. He is God. That's a wonderful thing to think about, if you will. Uh, it, it, if you think about it while wow. it's the second person of the Holy Trinity he wants to come into my heart he wants to come into my life he wants to, to meet, he wants to run my life if you will because I don't know how to do it myself uh, I make a mess out of it it's the creator of the universe in Colossians chapter 1 it tells us that Jesus Christ is the sustainer of the universe he is not only the creator, but he is the sustainer of the universe. He keeps the sun uh, uh, doing what it's supposed to do. He keeps the moon doing what it's supposed to do. He, t he keeps the earth doing what it's supposed to do, and the planets, and I could go on and on about that. But Jesus Christ is the creator of our universe. He is the sustainer of our universe. That Jesus is wanting to come into my heart. That Jesus is wanting to come into your heart as well. It's the sovereign Lord and only Savior. When I say he is sovereign, that means he can do anything he pleases with our lives. He can make us of what we, uh, what we, what we ought to be. The only reason I'm standing before you this morning, God called me to be a preacher after he saved me. God did save me. Jesus Christ did save me. He changed my life. Miss Peggy will tell you that for sure. But nonetheless, uh, God, God wanted me to be a preacher. And here I am. But it's the sovereign Lord, and he is our only Savior. The only Savior. Let me say that again. Uh, idols won't do it. Uh, ideas won't do it. Jesus Christ, he is knocking at our heart's door. Why is he knocking at our heart's door? He wants to come inside because he loves us. Oh, we sang a song just a few minutes ago. And I, I appreciate you, uh, appreciate Brother uh, Page. Uh, he, oh, how he loves you and me, you know. And he does love you and me. He does care about you and me. He does love us tremendously. He loves us so much that he gave his life. 
God loves us so much, he came down out of heaven. He laid aside his garment. He came down out of heaven. And he took upon him the, 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 the position of mankind. And because of that, he is a great Savior indeed. He, he wants to come in because he loves us. Oh, how he loves you and me. He wants to come inside because there is a great need in our hearts. Uh, open the door. Tell, tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell other people. And I know sometimes people can get all kind of crazy ideas and whatever. I'm trying to deal with a, a, a nephew of mine now. He's got some of the craziest ideas you ever... I don't, know, I don't know who in the world's been teaching him. I don't know what he's been reading. But none of it makes any sense at all, like the Bible does. The Bible makes sense. The Bible is, is what people, uh, what, what sustains people. But nonetheless, he wants to come in because there's a great need in our heart. Um, and, he, he, uh, the, and there is that. He says, um, well, let's see. Uh, why, why, oh, why is he, why is he uh, knocking at our heart's door? Heart door? Because he loves us. He wants to come inside because there's a great need in our heart. All have sinned. There's a great sin in all of our, our lives. There is no man. Solomon said it so well. He said, there's not a man, there's not a soul that has not sinned at one time or another. The Bible says, and Paul said it, Jesus said it, the disciples said it, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And because of that very truth, because of that very fact, if you will, Jesus Christ wants to come in to our hearts and change our hearts. All have sin. There is such a great sin in all of our hearts. And by the way, not, it, it, even, as, even as a Christian, I still have to deal with those things. And I have to have him help me to deal with certain things. There is a great sorrow in our lives as well. There is a great sorrow in so many people's lives. And maybe it's a, a child. Maybe it's a husband. Maybe it's a wife. Maybe it's a, a, some, somebody else. But nonetheless, people are sad and people are very sorry, sorrowful. There's a great sadness that we cannot overcome by ourselves. We cannot overcome sin by ourselves. Sin is a real thing and sin takes over sometimes and, and just does things to us that we don't, we don't want it to do, want it to do. But sometimes that, that's why Jesus wants to come into our heart. There's a great fear, if you will. All, all, all people are afraid. They're afraid to die. They're afraid to, 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 some people are afraid to live. Some people are afraid to die. But nonetheless, there's a great fear. And Jesus will quell that fear. There's a great loneliness. Think about Jesus in, in his, when he comes into our hearts. We are never alone again. He is always with us. I, when I first got saved, I was, there, there would be times I would wonder if I was saved. Uh, I struggled with that. But I, there was one thing I could not doubt. I could not doubt my life has changed. And I would say that out loud sometimes. Sometimes I would say it to myself. I cannot doubt that my, you know, and I had to struggle with doubt. Miss Peggy had to struggle with doubt, and you have to probably have to struggle with doubt. But there's a great loneliness that he feels when he comes into our lives. He, he must be invited. This is a great mystery, but it is true. When Warner Salzman painted that picture. And when he painted Jesus standing outside that door, he deliberately left off that hand, that handle, that doorknob. He deliberately left off that. Why did he leave it off? Because we have to open our heart's door from the inside. He must be invited inside. This is a great mystery, but it is true. There is the freedom of the will that we have to consider. God has given all men, all mankind, the freedom of the will. 
That's one reason I'm a free will Baptist, because I believe in a free will agency of men. And God has done that. He has given all men the right to choose. There is a power that God has given us to choose. There is a there is the power that God has given us to, to make a choice in life. Why is He knocking at our door? Because He wants to. He wants us to love Him, and He loves us. There must, but He must be invited in. This is a great mystery, but it is true. Then how does He knock with a still small voice? All of us know that still, small voice. We've all heard it. We've all know what, what, what that still, small voice sounds like. Sometimes it's a still, small voice that we hear that voice. Sometimes it's with mercy and grace. Mercy, we just, by the way, everybody in this room deserves hell at one time or another. All of us do. But nonetheless, it, uh, grace is extended to us unmerited favor of God God loves us in spite of everything we have done everything we have thought everything we have said oh, he loves us God loves us sometimes it's with a firm hand of reproof there's no doubt about that sometimes he does reprove us and bring us to himself sometimes it's a violent hand of judgment like he did with Sergeant Alvin York. Sergeant Alvin York was the greatest hero that, that, uh, we, that this country produced, if you will, uh, for, in the First World War. He was a drunkard. He was a, he fought, he, he was, he lived, he was living over in the mountains. And his mother was a, his mother was a good woman. His preacher was a good man. I could go on about that. But nonetheless, George, uh, he, I mean, um, um, Alvin sometimes would do things he ought not to do. He liked to gamble. He liked to drink. He liked to fight. He liked to do all of those things. He had gone several miles on the old mule, and he had gone several miles from one place in the mountains to another place in the mountains, and there he was. And there was a storm came up, and he had to go home. This lightning struck and killed a mule right out from under and just boom, right out from under. And, uh, and, and the tree, and it, and it struck a tree. It struck a tree and it struck that mule, but it didn't strike him. It changed his life. He changed his life that night. And he became one of the greatest heroes of the American, um, of the American War. Sometimes it's a vile hand of judgment like Alvin York. And sometimes God does all kind of things to help us come to him. In the Middle East today, listen very carefully, in the Middle East, in Iran, in Iraq, and in Afghanistan, and in other places in the Middle East, and the Far East, in India, and places like that, God is moving not so much through missionaries as he, and he does move through, move through missionaries. He's doing, he, he, he is doing that. But he's also through dreams and visions. I would have never believed that. But he is appearing to people in, in, in uh, dreams and in visions, and it is changing their lives. What happens when we say no to Jesus? To Jesus Christ. Well, we continue on in our sins and our lost condition. If I don't know how many times God helped me, God came to me and wanted to save me. And I don't know how many times I said no, but if I'd have died in that condition, I'd know what would happen. Happen, I would have been lost forever. In other, in other words, in in a, in, in, a, in and, uh, and so we continue on in our sinful loss condition. Number two, we grow worse in that sinful condition. I remember a fellow, what was his name? I'm trying to think of what his name was. Uh, my, where I was brought up, I was brought up at, at um, High Point, Freewell Baptist Church in Lancaster. 
Anyhow, we had a big crowd of people that Sunday and the preacher preached. There was a fellow in the crowd that he liked to knock the door down getting out of that church. He ran, and there was a little hill, just, just a little grade like that. He ran up there and was smoking a cigarette when everybody got out of, out of uh, church. At resisting the Holy Spirit of God, resisting Jesus Christ, resisting this business of Jesus wanting to come into the, his heart and to his life. That was his last time. After that, he had, it was a fire broke out and he burned up in that fire. This guy did. I'm trying to think of what his name was. But what happens when we say no? We grow worse in that sinful condition. We become, become set in our ways. And oh, I can't tell you the man that, that is set. I was pastoring down in Georgia and I was called to uh, do a revival meeting in Lancaster. So I told the church, I said, I want you to pray for a man who taught me how to drink, taught me how to steal, taught me how to lie, and all the rest. He was that kind of man. He was a wicked man. It was, it, it was all of that. His name was Jim Hunter. I said, uh, pray for Jim Hunter. I said, I'm going to go see him when I go home. I understand that Jim is sick. I understand that Jim's not long for this world, and I'm going to do my very best to go see him when I get to Lancaster. And lo and behold, when I walked in the church, people were gathering up and so forth. When I walked in the church that night, Jim was there at that service. So I went up to him and I embraced him. And I whispered in his ear, I said, Jim, have you given it to the Lord? Have you made it right with God yet? He said, I've made it right with the Lord. And wasn't that wonderful? He made it right with the Lord. I, not long after that, he died and went on to be with the Lord. But anyhow, uh, what happens when we uh, do not say yes to Jesus? We become set in our ways. We become hardened to the gospel. We become hard to the gospel, if you will. I, the old preachers used to say it so well. They said, you hold on to the seat now. Say that your knuckles turn white. Say that it's not long till your knuckles are not that, that, uh, on that seat at all. Because you become hard to the gospel. And we become hopelessly lost, if you will. That's a, Jesus used that term, lost. I come to seek and to save, Jesus said, those who are lost. We die and we meet God in our sinful condition. Oh, that's a great tragedy indeed. We die and we meet God in our sinful condition. What happens when we say yes? There's another great mystery. We're born again when we say yes to God. When he's trying to get into our hearts and when he's trying to get into our lives and we say yes, we are born again. Jesus used that term. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. He said, and he says, and, and it, it is from above, if you will. God is the one who saves us. We're born again. We're saved from sin and self-destruction. We're killing ourselves in this culture. We're killing ourselves in America. We're killing ourselves in Europe. We're killing ourselves in the Far East. You know, you all of you know that. But nonetheless, with, without, with, with God, it's a different story. We're born again. We're saved from sin and self-destruction, if you will. We have been saved from the penalty of sin, which is eternal hell. We have been saved from the penalty of sin. We are being saved from the power of sin. That's by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we sang about the, G, the Holy Spirit this morning, did we not? And we will be saved from the presence of sin in a place called heaven one day. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful time when we get to heaven. 
But anyhow, what is your response? Will you answer that knock on the door? Jesus Christ is knocking on all hearts' door today, and he wants to come in to people's hearts and people's lives. I don't know if, if, and I've talked to a lot of people down through the years. I really have. Uh, that, that's, that's one of my jobs, is to talk to people about their relationship with God. Okay? And then I've done that down through the years. And I've asked people uh, about their relationship with the Lord. And every one, I think every one of those people, uh, maybe one, maybe one didn't. Anyhow, um, but anyhow, there's just about all of those people say, have, have a tendency to talk about what God has done in their lives, how he's how he's speaking to them, how he's talking to them. And you, and I say, yes, Jesus is talking to you through the Holy Spirit. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to come to him. So tell your, 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 your children about it. Tell your grandchildren. Tell your great-grandchildren. Tell your neighbor. Tell all who will, whosoever will, let him come and take the water of life through them. God bless you as our prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the men who are here and and the fathers who have raised these children. And and uh, some is good and some is bad. But we thank you for the good daddies that have done done right by their children and right by their wives and right by their mothers and daddies. And we thank you for them. We pray, Lord, that you would use us this day. Make us a blessing to others in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're free to go.